you know, pushing send, hitting publish, this is when the marketing actually happened. But it usually only works when someone cares. What I'm gonna teach you in the rest of this video applies just as much today in the age of AI as it did about 10, 11 years ago when I learned it firsthand. And it's a simple, simple principle, but things that work often, they're not sexy, they're not complicated. So in 2013, I helped to form a SaaS mastermind for founders. This is a software as a service mastermind for fellow entrepreneurs who were starting SaaS businesses. SaaS companies are, you know, software companies where there's usually like a reoccurring revenue pricing component to them. And I did this in collaboration with Andrew Warner over at Mixergy, amazing podcast and a great entrepreneur himself has completed thousands of interviews with entrepreneurs one-on-one -on -one at this point. Amazing if you haven't checked it out. Well, one of the people and one of the entrepreneurs who was in this SaaS mastermind was Brennan Dunn. And uh, Brennan himself has only continued to grow in his reputation uh, as an entrepreneur and as a founder since this time. But when he came into the group, he was already doing well, um, better than some other members, including myself, in certain specific ways. He was quite successful in the content marketing area. Um, this was when content marketing as a concept really started to come into its own definition or just to be kind of like a commonly used uh, phrase. I saw this, everyone saw this in the group. He was accumulating, for example, you know, dozens of email opt-ins every week to his newsletter. He was making continuous sales for his online info products and courses uh, into the niche that he was uh, selling and marketing into, and who was not spending a dime on advertising. This was all from his writing on his blog, for example. And so I asked him about it one day during one of our mastermind uh, meetings where we would come together on video and we would, we would talk about what was new with us in the last week or two, each of us kind of sharing what was going well as what, are, you know, what were the challenges, where did we want to learn or improve? And so I asked Brendan, I said, you know, how are you doing this? I'd like to understand so that I could do it well uh, within my company, um, which was a digital marketing agency at the time. This was, you know, years before we uh, started to productize and, and do as well as we ended up doing, ultimately uh, crossing seven figures in revenue as a company for the first time in uh, 2021. He told me the following, which I just have hung on to because it worked ultimately when I applied it later. He said, it's, it's cause and effect. It's just cause and effect. The cause being he was putting out quality content and the effect being that he was accumulating email subscribers who would become leads, who would become buyers of his info products and sometimes at the time coaching offering. It's just cause and effect. He further advised, you know, in terms of the context of content marketing, just focus on giving value. I didn't fully get it, but I said, okay, I think I get it enough. I'm just going to hold on to this. So that's what I did. I started writing articles that were just naturally um, long, in-depth, comprehensive. And every time I would write a sentence or finish a paragraph, I would look back at what I wrote and I'd reflect is this giving value? If not, it's gone, delete it. Was it providing some value, even just basically in the form of, you know, sounding like a human being wrote it, maybe there's some personality, some sort of humor joking around. And especially, of course, was it educating? Because this was meant to be educational content on the topic of, for example, marketing and specifically sales funnels, where we built a lot of our traffic and reputation um, in the coming months and years as a direct result of, of writing said content with this in mind. And so I kept doing that and the results began to take off. Traffic began to take off steadily and then compounding faster and faster until it felt like all at once. And then people started coming to me and mentioning me and their blog articles. And 
you know, asking me for uh, interviews and citing me as a source and my, my company's brand. It worked. This concept of giving value, but the cousin or uh, brother concept of cause and effect as it relates to marketing, that only really clicked for me at the moments when I would actually push send on email campaigns where I would spend a solid 20 to 30 plus hours sometimes because these were long articles and that was part of what made it stand out. I didn't plan for them to be that way. It's just that's that's just what was natural to me to make them very comprehensive. These were comprehensive articles. Sometimes they'd be lo as long as 5,000 and 10,000 words. I think the longest I wrote was 15 to 20,000 in, in one case. So very comprehensive and that's part of the reason why Google rewarded us and others would link to us. But the cause and effect principle clicked for me when I literally clicked send on emails and I just realized something really basic, you know, pushing send or hitting publish like on WordPress, this is when the marketing actually happened. This was kind of that final kind of trigger point that would be the cause. And in a way, this was also the definition of marketing happening because everything up until this point was more or less just kind of planning and preparation. But the definition of marketing, you could say, is it's going to market. You know, market is the root word in marketing. So we were going to market with this content. The content was our vehicle, but your vehicle could be some other type of vehicle, like an ad, for instance. But this was marketing. This was the essence of marketing, to push send, to hit publish, because we were going to market. We were getting in front of people who would become part of our audience. Um, the article, the newsletter, when we hit publish, it was leaving the garage, you know, and we would drive it around out into the market. And people would notice, you know, the market itself would respond, some like it, and would pick it up, and some not. And if it was something that was not of value, not interesting, and or entertaining, and or useful, then it would not be picked up and noticed. But more times than not, because I put effort and focus and focused on the value aspect, uh, it would get picked up and people would notice. This is cause and effect. This is the law, if you like, in the context of marketing of cause and effect. The effect was a boost in email subscribers, traffic, leads, sales, and the cause was hitting, hitting the button or buttons in the case of publishing and or sending an email campaign. But the cause of the cause that leads to the effect that you want, that we all want, is you. You as a marketer, a founder or owner must realize you are the cause. That is a fact. There's no words being dressed up here. You have to be the cause of the cause and effect. And you decide to become the cause, or if it makes sense, and you have to be real careful with this, you could hire someone who is great and knows what they're doing and is competent and who cares, and they can be the cause. Or you can partner with someone if you're just getting started who potentially is great at marketing and they can be the cause. And maybe you focus on a different part of the company, like maybe technical ability is your focus. But it usually only works when someone cares. This is what I found from my experience. I am today and have been since I started the company a, a solo founder. Brief moments where I considered partners uh, for the long term and on a past business that I started in college, um, I did have some partners, but only one actually ended up working out really well because it's the rare case where you can find someone who compliments you well, compliments your skill set well, and who cares, who truly cares and wants to work hard and do a great job. So furthermore, if you're going to outsource or hire this responsibility, I would say the risk is even greater because there is a lack of uh, skin in the game if you are 
uh, just paying for it. And it's not saying that you can't do it. It's more likely than not, though, that you will have to pay very well to find someone who is really great. The other option is, you know, if you're hiring someone to do this, you want to do it at the point where you've already figured it out. You and your team, you, you know what works and you've done it consistently. And so someone else can kind of just step in and, and do it well. But even for that to happen, you have to decide to be the cause. And for most of the people watching this, most likely you, you have to be the cause directly. For otherwise, there's not going to be an effect, the effect that we want, which is more email subscribers, more traffic, more leads, and more sales. Because otherwise, perhaps, the cause will be, on the one hand, you watching too many YouTube videos on how to grow, but then finding a lack of results. And so the effect becomes, instead of what you want, more consumption, time passing, lower sales, and less or lacking growth. It's not meant to create a feeling of FOMO or missing out for you or urgency, like I see so many YouTubers and just breathless content creators putting out, pumping out every single day. Fear sells for sure. It's just a fact. You have to decide to be the cause, to cause the effect of growth in your business for you and for your team. There's no moment like right now. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it valuable, please consider sharing it with others because it is shares from people like you who watch until the end and are seriously invested in getting value from the content that helps the channel to grow and helps encourage me to continue to make content like this. Furthermore, I would appreciate it if you did find it valuable to also like the video, subscribe, and I'd love to hear from you if you'd like to leave a comment if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're watching this on the blog, leave a comment on the blog too. And if you'd like to learn more about what my team and I are working on, check out Grobo.com. Grobo is a growth automation platform for businesses where we help to automate your growth. You still need to be the cause by deciding to sign up and try it out. Um, but the effect or the, uh, the cause that leads to the effect of growth is that you get a team of AI agents Grobos, as we call them, who work within your grow flows, which are like workflows or projects. And on a one time or reoccurring basis, depending on whatever you want to do, um, they will get your marketing done for you. They will run your internal processes for you, these AI agents, and they will help you to save a lot of time and a lot of money and to grow and scale your business. Check it out at Grobo.com. And I will see you in the next video.